Our next speaker is Rich Backler. He spent 19 years as a middle school science teacher for South Redford School Districts. He now tries to learn, learn and share as much as humanly possible about the next generation science standards for the Wayne County RESA Education Service Dis Department. Let's all welcome Rich to the stage. Thanks. I hope you guys are having a good night. Um, I know I, I've heard so many like, great speeches tonight that I, I've forgotten half of mine already. Um, and, and truly, if you're not inspired by what you've heard tonight, I don't think we can be friends. But, <laughs> but we'll, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> Marie Wilson said, you can't be what you can't see. And she said that to encourage girls to shoot for the White House and become president. And I'll tell you, like, I thought like, tonight that quote was going to get me a really big cheer. And tonight, it, you know, it feels a little different than that. Um, but role models are important. But I don't think they're the one thing that's going to get us over the top in terms of NGSS. Um, I used to show October Sky in my classroom a lot because I wanted kids to see um, themselves in, in Homer Hickam's story. Right, a kid from a coal mining town considered himself a hillbilly and he became a NASA scientist and, and helped get us into space. Right? And, and thankfully, Margot Lee Shetterly now has, has given us a more complete story um, by shedding light on Katherine Johnson and Marie Jackson and Dorothy Vaughn and the hundreds of others um, who contributed to that effort um, and got you know, the more known heroes into space. Um, but again, like, when I was teaching that, most of my kids were from inner, the inner city, right? They, they were brown kids. And, and it was really hard for them to, to tie into Homer Hickam's story, even, even as great a story as it was. Um, you know, my dad, uh, my dad grew up in the Philippines, and he was about eight years old when the Japanese invaded, and his family was uh, forced to flee their hometown. Um, both of my, par or my grandparents were uh, teachers. And the legend has it, and I heard this story many times, is that even in the jungle, hiding from the Japanese, uh, they forced him to do his math and his writing on the back of a banana leaf <laughs> sprinkled with sand. Okay? Now, I say that because um, that gave me sort of the privilege of growing up in a culture of learning. And my dad went on to become an oncologist and started one of the first cancer care centers in my hometown. And I'll tell you, like, being a kid in that house, it's really hard to complain about doing your algebra homework. Because you know it's going to go something like this. And I don't really feel like doing my homework tonight. Richard, do you have a textbook? Yes, Dad. Do you have a calculator? Yes, Dad. I had banana leaf. <laughs> I mean, you, you can't argue with that, right? Um, so, so growing up, I actually did think I was going to follow in his footsteps and become a, a doctor. Um, but as it turns out, um, needles and blood make me faint. <laughs> so I had to pick another path. Like my dad's story was not going to be 100% my story. And so um, becoming a middle school teacher in the mid to late 90s, I had another role model, right? Be Bill Nye, that's what I could be, right? And so what I did was I took my binder full of content and I learned as much as I possibly could about what a middle schooler was supposed to know about physical science, earth science, and life science. And then I went on a search to find the most engaging, most fun, hands-on lessons that I could. And I think I was pretty good at it. Um, I, even, I even dressed up like, like, in, like an inspector when we were looking for clues. Um, I dressed up like a pirate before you could get a speaking engagement <laughs> by doing that. Um, and I'm not getting paid for this one, but maybe it's because I don't have the costume. Anyway, I, I thought I was a pretty effective teacher. Um, but the problem was that I was still trying to, to teach science just from my story. I was trying to share my passion for science. And, and for some kids, it worked. But for a lot of kids, it didn't. They just couldn't see themselves in the, in the story that I was telling. 
right? And then along came the NGSS. And um, you know, I, I read as much as I possibly could. I listened to Stephen Pruitt. And I, I, I could hear his, I mean, he didn't actually say this, but I could hear his like, Kentucky drawl saying, your curriculum is like putting lipstick on a pig. Right? I was just trying to make stuff entertaining. But what I really needed to do was let the kids tell their own story. And you know, the other thing that, that he said in that book, uh, NGSS for All, is that it's all standards for all students. And this was supposed to be bigger than our Sputnik moment. Right? We were supposed to take all students, all standards, and then teach them about careers that we, didn't, we couldn't even define right now. I mean, no pressure. Right? No pressure. I can do that. I mean, I was going to have to really figure out something out to make this happen. Um, and so I, I read as much as I could. Um, and one of the things that jumped out at me was that all standards and all students comes even before the three dimensions in the appendices. You ever notice that? That means we really have to deal with equity. And we're going to do that through the three dimensions. I mean, it's, I wear this bracelet not just because I really like the colors, but it's a reminder that it's only engaging students in those practices and about those important ideas in science that we're going to get students, all students, to really tell the story of science. Um, so, <clears throat> like I said, I read as much as I could, but Stephen Pruitt also says you can't just read about the standards and know how to do it. You have to dive in. And, you know, again, you can't be what you can't see. And so I was having a real hard time trying to figure out, how am I going to do this? Um, and it wasn't until I was sitting in, a, in an NGSX training um, doing the crushing bottle. And actually, Jessica Ashley um, leaned over to me and she said, you know what this is? It's designed to discover instead of due to confirm. I said, Jessica, what? Designed to discover instead of due to confirm. And those words hit me like a ton of bricks. It was my, like, oh, I think I can see that, right? Um, and I, I, I keep thinking about that over and over again, but I had to figure out some tools. Like, I, I didn't know how to do that, right? So I dug into Sarah Michael's work on, on the talk moves. And I'll, I'll tell you, I wasn't very good at it at the beginning. I mean, I had to make a cheat sheet. <laughs> but I figure if Tom Brady can wear one of these, so can I, right? <laughs> You do what it takes. You do what it takes. Okay, um, but but there were some there there was definitely some some hiccups in my process, and I knew I had to start with phenomenon because again equity meant that all kids all all students had to see the same thing and start on that level playing field. So anchor phenomenon became really important to me in my classroom, and and argumentation became really important in setting norms. And there's two stories that that kind of solidified all of that for me. Two kids, um, in, my, two kids in my class that, that really solidified that. One was, her name was uh, Adrienne. And she came into my classroom as a straight A student. She was one of our million re word readers on that automatic reading thing that they make kids do. Right? So when we first started explaining phenomena, she struggled. I mean, she could read anything that I put in front of her and, and regurgitate and recite back to me what she read. But when she got to explaining things, she really, really struggled. And so I gave her like some C's on her first couple papers. And guess who was knocking at my door? Yeah. Her mom was at my door real quick. And she had two questions that, again, hit me like a ton of bricks. She said, why is my straight-A student now getting C's in your class? And why is she telling me that you don't even teach the class anymore? She says you let the kids teach each other. And I don't pay you to let the kids teach each other. So clearly, like, I had a communication problem. I was all excited about engaging the students in three dimensions. I, I thought the students were. But I had a communication issue. And that was one big lesson in, in becoming a three-dimensional teacher, is that I had to do a better job of communicating to my parents and to the other stakeholders what we were trying to accomplish. And by the end of the course, she got a lot better at doing, uh, doing explanations. And in fact, she ended up with an A in my class. Not that that means a whole lot. The other student that um, really taught me something was on the complete other end of the spectrum. Her name was Ariana, and she was a special ed student. Her IEP and her behavior record were pages long. I mean, pages and pages long. 
And this child came into my classroom, and she truly was a hidden figure. I mean, she hid from everything that was challenging. But, well, actually, in the, in the first, first time I tried to do a talk move with her, um, she thought some of the, one of the other kids ta- ta- thought she was stupid or said she was stupid, and she threw the desks over, and we had an issue. But she came back to my classroom, and that, that taught me that I had to do a better job of setting norms. And again, it was, it was me. Like, I wasn't going to uh, fix this by telling them some fancy story. I had to build a culture in my classroom where it was okay to be wrong. And that took a lot of hard work, but it was worth it. Because again, by the end of, of my class, Ariana was offering answers without being coerced by me picking her name off a popsicle stick. And to me, that was really, really powerful. So we do still have hidden figures in our classrooms. right? But I think the key to using NGSS is really to, tr- to stop trying to tell your story of science, but put science in front of the kids and let them figure it out, truly designed to discover. And you'll see a lot of changes in your classrooms and a lot of more learning in your kids. Thank you.